morning. <laughs> uh, so it is a joy and a blessing to be here with each and every one of you. Our numbers may be few, but our spirits are high, and we are here to sing with gusto and to bring much enthusiasm to our worship of our good and gracious God. A um, couple of brief announcements. Today, after church, we have our first week of Sunday school. Um, so literally everyone is welcome. We have a class for our littlest folks. We have a class for our kind of elementary school kids, our high school kids. And if you're in a grown-up, we got a class for you too. So come on downstairs. We'll help you find where all of that stuff is after church. Um, next week is our deadline for the 125th anniversary. So if you have not RSVP'd yet to the office, um, please do. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, see me, because that means something got lost in the mail. So we want to make sure that is all in good order. Also, next week is my installation. I've been here for several months, but with um, the sanctuary as warm as it sometimes gets, we wanted to wait until the fall started to cool things off a little bit. Um, so that will be next week at 3 o'clock. We'll have a reception afterwards. Um, some folks from the Synod will be here. Pastor Brian will be preaching. It'll be a good time. Um, so please plan on coming to that if you're able. Any other announcements for the good of the order? Yeah. Uh, we've been talking about this book in a couple of weeks, and we need to have a person to sponsor it. But it's not going to be So for the folks who are joining us online, just repeat that since I've got the microphone. Um, Cindy is looking for some boxes to put the quilts in for when we ship those out in a couple of weeks. So sizable boxes are nice because they're bulky items. If you have quilts that you would like to pass along to the Lutheran World Relief efforts, bring those in in the next week or so, and we'll add those to the grouping. With that, let us take a moment to quiet our hearts and minds for worship. And before we sing our first song, I neglected to say welcome back to Maisie. Uh, it is so good to have her back with us. Her and Sabrina and baby Samantha is here too. So make sure you wave hello to the little one. Sabrina will be more than happy to tell you all about her. Uh, oh, Dan, you're welcome too. <laughs> with that, let us stand and sing our first song. <laughs> Yo, harmonies, long great, why are they words you'll 
brightly glimpse his gripe of harvest justice Yahweh the pass and try you choose the half stranger you left the crucify blessed be the holy trinity one god who is eager to forgive and who loves us beyond our days amen Dear friends, together let us acknowledge our failure to love this world as Jesus does. God of mercy and forgiveness, we confess that sin still has a hold on us. We have harmed your good creation. We have failed to do justice, love kindness, and walk humbly with you. Turn us in a new direction. Show us the path that leads to life. Be our refuge and strength on the journey. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer and Friend. Amen. Beloved of God, know that your sins have been forgiven and you have been made whole. God points the way to new life in Christ, who meets us on the road. Journey now in God's abiding love, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Oh, Lord, a high valley king, almighty God, our Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated on the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you, Lord, the Holy One, you, Lord, the Lord, you, Lord, the Most High, Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. A reading from the book of Amos. Hear this, you that trample on the needy and bring to ruin the poor of the land, saying, when will the new moon be over so that we may sell grain and the Sabbath so that we may offer wheat for sale? We will make the ephah small and the shackle great and practice deceit with false balances, buying the poor for silver and the needy for a pair of sandals and selling the sweepings of the wheat. The Lord has sworn by the pride of Jacob, surely I will never forget any of their deeds. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the book of 1 Timothy. First of all, then, I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgivings be made for everyone, for kings and all who are in high positions, so that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and dignity. This is right and is acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires everyone to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, there is also one mediator between God and humankind, Christ Jesus himself human, who gave himself a ransom for all. This was attested at the right time. For this I was appointed herald and an apostle. I am telling the truth, I am not lying. A teacher of the Gentiles in faith and truth. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said to the disciples, There was a rich man who had a manager, and charges were brought to him that this man was squandering his property. So he summoned him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give me an accounting of your management, because you cannot be my manager any longer. Then the manager said to himself, What will I do now that my master is taking the position away from me? I am not strong enough to dig, and I am ashamed to beg. I have decided what to do so that when I am dismissed as a manager, people may welcome me into their homes. So summoning his master's debtors one by one, he asked the first, how much do you owe my master? He answered, a hundred jugs of olive oil. He said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and make it 50. Then he asked another, and how much do you owe? He replied, a hundred containers of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and make it 80. And his master commended the dishonest manager because he had acted shrewdly. For the children of this age are more shrewd in dealing with their own generation than are the children of light. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of dishonest wealth, so that when it is gone, they may welcome you into their eternal homes. Whoever is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. And whoever is dishonest in very little is dishonest also in much. If then you have been faithful with the dishonest wealth, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not been faithful with what belongs to another, who will give you what is your own? No slave can serve two masters, for a slave will either hate the one and love the other, or be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and wealth. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. from hope lies his flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him, all bowie heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, Holy a book. Um, I don't know that any of you would find this very interesting. It's a, a book on um, getting to know a community from a pastor's perspective. And yeah, it's, it's a textbook. It's for learning. Um, but there is something about this book you might recognize. Has anyone seen a book that has something like this on the spine? Haven't? Where have you seen this, Abigail? In a library. So I got this book. I didn't want to buy it because uh, I wanted to see what it was about, and so I borrowed it from a library. Now, when you borrow a library book, what are you supposed to do with a library book? Are you supposed to throw it on the ground and stomp it with your feet? 
Are you supposed to find the nearest mud puddle and slam it in the mud puddle? No. Um, use it as a plate to eat your spaghetti off of it. No. What are you supposed to do with the library book? Read it. <laughs> and are you supposed to take good care of it? Yeah. Why do we take good care of our library books? Because they belong to the library, and we want to take care of them so that other people can use them and enjoy them, right? Yeah. So the church has a lot of words that we don't hear in places that are not the church. Uh, one of these words is called a steward. Have you ever heard of a steward? Yeah, it's probably not. I think it's a pretty much limited to the church these days. A steward is another word that gets used for the guy we call a manager in today's gospel. And a steward is someone who takes care of something that belongs to someone else. And in the Bible, we are called to be stewards of God's creation. So if we kind of think of God's creation like a library book, we shouldn't destroy it, we shouldn't hurt it. If we use a plastic water bottle, what should we do with it? We'll drink it, but when we're all done with it, what do we do with the bottle? Throw it in the trash on the side of the road? Or do we put it in the recycle bin? If we have paper, we can recycle that. What'd you say? If it's metal, then you can reuse it. And that's even better. And so we are called stewards of God's creation. Because much like we take care of our library books, we are called to take care of everything that God gives us. And that includes the earth and all that's around us, and also all of our family and friends, we take care of them because we are stewards of those relationships and we are stewards of the way of all that God has given us. And so we take care of all of it, just like I take care of my library books. We use it, we enjoy it, but we remember that it belongs to God. And so we take good care of it so that it can be continue to be enjoyed for years and years to come. Can you remember that God loves you? Can you remember that God loves them? Can you remember that God loves other people? Excellent. Let's say a prayer. Good and gracious God, we thank you for giving us so much in this world, so much good creation and wonderful beings in this world. We ask that you help us to know how to take good care of everything you have entrusted to us and help us to be good stewards. In your precious name we pray. Amen. Thank you. You guys can head on back. Would you please pray with me? God, breathe your spirit into and among us, so we don't just hear words with our ears, but hear in our hearts the message you have for us this day. Amen. So when I uh, was first interviewing to, to come to St. John, I was down in the basement for all these interviews, and this picture caught my eye. And I asked myself, what is that? And of course, then I had to go over and I had to get a closer look of it. Now, especially from the back, this looks very much like the sanctuary, right? That's kind of the neat thing about it. But, take it off the back. But on, when you look at it super closely, each little pixel of this picture is actually a picture taken from the photo directory that was made at the time. I love this. Partially because it helps us remember then that the church is not the building. The church is the people, and the people make up St. John as it is, even if this is the picture we see of St. John. It's the people that are the church. Now, if you were to look super closely, like this looks kind of like our Christ light up there, our Christ window, but there's no picture of Jesus in there. Or these look like the lights, but there is no picture of the lights. We can see the details here, even though they're not actually here. The details are important. It matters that this woman is wearing a red shirt. But who that woman is gets lost when we look at the bigger picture. And I, I like this as a way of looking at today's gospel. Today's gospel is, well, it's confusing and it's weird. And no one, scholars of many generations included, really knows why Jesus decided to tell this story why Luke decided this story needed to be in our gospel lessons. Because there's a lot of details that are missing. We don't know why the manager uh, was accused of squandering wealth. We don't know if he actually squandered wealth. Um, 
We don't know why he decided to downplay the debts at the amounts that he did. We don't know if when he got commended, did he get his job back? There's a lot in this story we don't know. And so a lot of folks over the years have tried to go back and add in the details. Well, I think based on kind of surrounding evidence that this is probably, and so we plug in the details because we're trying to make sense of this story about someone who is called dishonest being commended. And I wonder if in doing that, we get lost in the details. It's like if we looked at this picture and only looked at one square at a time and focused only on the faces and never stepped back to see the larger picture in front of us. So now I'm not going to claim that I am smarter than generations of interpreters and I have the ultimate answer. I'm not saying that, let's be clear. But when I look at this gospel, when I was reading it this year, because every time you read it, it looks a little different. When I was reading it this year, I saw a story that was not actually about how this guy handled money. I saw a story that was about a guy who learned that money, wealth, financial security, all of that can come and it can go. And when it goes, you have nothing left. He did not have a job anymore. He could not beg. He could not work. And so he needed to find something that would last beyond any sort of financial insecurity. And what he found was relationships. The relationships he could form would last. And that was something he could lean on forever. Now, this story, I don't think, is telling us to go and buy friends, because of kind of what the manager did. Uh, I do not think that's the goal here. I think that's one of those little details that we can get caught up in. But it, this story does help us to think, no matter what situation we happen to be in, we can use our situation and what we have been given and what is presented to us to try and do the most good with what we have. And we can try to use what we have to help build relationship, relationships instead of trying to build wealth or material goods. So we can get caught up in the details. We can worry um, that, well, I, I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure her smile is quite straight. We could get stuck in those details, but that, that defeats the purpose. Because if we get stuck in those details, we will never see this beautiful picture. If we get stuck in the details of the story and questioning why this is and, and can we guess why this happened or how this happened or, or who these people were, if we get stuck in those details, we'll lose sight of that message that money and wealth and material goods, we can build them up, but they can go away just as easily. Instead, we can focus on building our relationships and fostering a, a heart in ourselves that we can do the most good with what we have in front of us. We can step back and see the picture of the church. The details are important. It's important that this is someone who is managing wealth. It's important that this guy was in a tough situation. It's important to know these details because the details help us to see the bigger picture but we can't lose the bigger picture for the sake of the details. And that's what faith is about so much of the time. We have lots and lots of details in all of scripture, but at the end of the day, God is continually calling us back to this idea of love, of fostering relationships, of doing the most good with what you have. Even if you're in an ambiguous situation where it's not really clear that there is a right answer of how to handle what's in front of you. No matter the situation in front of us, we can always find a way to do the most good with what we have. We can always find a way to build relationships so that when everything else fades away, the love and care we have in those relationships is something we can lean on forever and something that will be fostered in God's love and at this table and in that font for this generation and for all generations to come. Amen. Oh, God, eh?
Lord may flash whose birds are moss, hollows or human rays. You are who through in glory for your will ever play. Fill us with your love and pity, heal our wrong and help our need. I see you, Lord, have lived for others, so may we for others live. Freely have your gifts been granted, freely may your servants give. In a God, yours a Savior, yours a wealth and land sea. We pass the words of your bounty, held in solemn trust will be. Come, O Christ, and reign among us, King of love and Prince of peace. Hush the storm of strife and passion, be this crucial discourse seen. By your patient years of toiling, by your silence hours of pain, Gosh, our favored thirst of pleasure, stem our selfish grain of pain. Son of God, eternal Savior, source of life and truth and grace, word may flash whose personal mass hollows our human race. By your praying, by your willing, that your people should be one. Grant, O oh, grant, our hopes fruition, here on earth your will be done. With the whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As scattered grains of wheat are gathered together into one bread, so let us gather our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of God's good creation. God, our Savior, you keep your church in faith and truth. Accompany those preparing for baptism or affirmation of baptism. Enlighten preachers, teachers, seminarians, and all those who share your good news with the world. God of grace. We are grace. Divine teacher, you instruct your children to be responsible stewards of your creation. Show us how best to care for the earth and its resources and guide those who work to develop sustainable practices. God of grace, Amen. ruler of the nations, you direct those in authority. Give leaders wisdom and compassion so that all may live in peace. Inspire public servants to follow the example of courageous leaders and safeguard the dignity of each person. God of grace, Amen. helper of the needy, you lift up those who are oppressed. Breathe justice into economic and social systems that perpetuate poverty and hunger. Sustain food ministries, clothing banks, and emergency shelters. Give comfort and strength to all in need, especially Jeff, Bob, Katie, Marcia, Geneva, Cherry, Winnie, Chuck, Henry, Harry, Roy, Pastor Storm, Karen, Ellen, Ruth, Sally, 
in Abigail, and those on our prayer list, and all whom we remember aloud or in our hearts. God of grace, sustain, sustainer and giver of life, you bless this congregation with abundance. Instruct us in the proper and faithful use of wealth and resources that we share generously. God of grace, God of glory, you gather your saints around your throne. Keep us thankful for the witness of those who have gone before us and bring us with them to the heavenly feast that has no end. God of grace. We lift up today the prayers on the congregation's heart at this time, especially praying for the Sunday school ministry, all those leaders and students as they come together. May they find your love and grace in their learning. And gathered together in the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, gracious God, we offer these and all our prayers to you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another.
Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, mighty Lord, grace from the high, endless is your mercy and eternal your reign. You have filled all creation with light. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. We praise you for the grace shown to your people in every age. The promise to Israel, the rescue from Egypt, the gift of the promised land, the word of the prophets, and the gift of your son. Proclaim good news in word and deed, and with obedience to your will, even the giving of life. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this. Thankful for 
shines forever, gracious dawn out of our days. Skills and tunnel the rising through the cause of Christ the Son. Though thy peace in health and freedom raises joy, the church may one now direct our daily labor lies we strive for self alone for with highlights may our souls feed to answer i yield through try to you the entrusted can through by your grace comfort ours to use the home and kingdom and to spread the gospel word open wide our hands in sharing eyes we hear Christ's ageless calm healing teaching I recall me so may you by loving all Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist us in this ministry on which we are sent for. Bless those who carry your heavenly food to those unable to be with us this day. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those to whom we bring the sacrament, that through the body and blood of your Son, we all may know the comfort of your abiding presence. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of the abundant table, you have refreshed our hearts in this meal with bread for the journey. Give us your grace on the road that we might serve our neighbors with joy for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God who gives life to all things and frees us from despair, bless you with truth and peace. And may the Holy Spirit, one God, guide you always in faith, hope, and love. Amen. Rise up, O sons of God, from the ambitions turn. Christ your child and the young hearts with no zeal my burn. Sense of God, this vain earth's frame, as his of God's baptism grace, the world of hope proclaim. God, the
rejoice, his cross all calls the Christ, gave it just his larger place. Of God, creation, Christ in pain, and falls the heart of healing now, with love awake us Unquickened by the Spirit's power, raise up all sins of God. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.